Hello guys, this is good like and this is well something or rather it's it's my setup for OBS. More importantly though as you can see uh, my microphone is now at 50 whereas previously it was at 100 for some reason. I mentioned this but when that happens the, when I actually then start to edit the sound you can really hear noise that you really shouldn't be hearing so it's a lot of editing a pain in the ass and it's annoying as well and i don't know why it keeps happening it just keeps setting to 100 and then well technically it's only happened twice so i guess it's too soon to say it's setting or that it's it's, it's getting there you know but it's it could be better so last time we looked at the alternatives of YouTube subscription box that are available today and various things that I want to do with my version that I'll make that are not necessarily present all at the same time. In today's video I want to go over well all these things so basically just very high level stuff and uh, hopefully not take nine minutes before we actually start seeing things happen on the screen because that's seems to be a thing that keeps happening i'm a talkative guy but it's just for these starting videos i'm sure so as you can see these videos i will be recording with java 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 1.8 or something like that java 8 however you want to call it uh, who knows, maybe it'll take forever, so we'll use newer versions of Java. Anything's possible, but I hope not. Now, I say that you need to be familiar with it, because if you're not, you're probably not going to understand what the hell I'm doing at all. So, it is Java, so if there is a language you had a chance of doing that, it would be Java. So, maybe I'm not giving Java enough credit here, but I'm pretty sure you need to at least understand how it works. I could try to make an introductory series about Java, but I feel like it wouldn't be the right thing for this series. Uh, the reason is because with this series I'm trying to write an actual application that I will actually use using actual processes. Whereas very often when you would see a series like this, in fact, I've seen at least one <laughs> where the application is more like a toy. It's not really meant to be used or the situation in which something is explained is completely made up. Something like, oh, we'll write a function that determines if a number is a prime. Because you, you need to write that so often. Oh my God. We could do that. Or we could write a YouTube subscription box. I think the second, the latter so to speak, is a far better alternative. And if you're going to do something like that, doing the basics is just not going to work because we will need to get already into semi-advanced topics. I wouldn't say they're really like advanced. We're not going to do anything crazy here. You're not going to see any of that big data or machine learning i mean no nothing like that of the sort far far cry from it it's just it's just gonna be basic java plus a little bit extra i'm not sure what to recommend if you don't know any of this i guess i would just say go try coding with java with just some random place actually that's not true i do have something i have this the key t byte com coder. Hi, click the circle at the bottom left to get this problem correct. As you can see, if you click the circle at the bottom left, was it? I half didn't pay attention. You'll get it correct. But you must be logged in. Uh, you just ignore it, it just won't save it. I don't know, I don't know where I found this. Maybe it was one day in Reddit. But it's basically an interactive guide that sort of teaches you Java, I guess. It's, it's probably the basics of the basics. 
I mean, the first problem was click a button on their UI. That didn't even have anything to do with coding. So it's, it's got to be pretty basic. I'm just saying, it's, it's something that I know as an option. You could try anything else you want. Anything that's outside of that, I will actually elaborate. That's not why I wrote elaborate here, but I will try my best. As well as I will try my best with TDD and Agile. Now, again, I'm no expert in either of those. The place where I work technically does Agile, but I'm not sure if it really counts. And uh, TDD is just, you know, I definitely don't always do TDD. It's just, I try. So that's why I said, that's why I write here, I'll try my best. Uh, and we'll see what happens. As far as all of this is concerned, I will talk more in detail about the process in the next video, which will probably be the last video where we don't actually write any code. I mean, I can write some code right now. Here, public stat, holy shit, that Public static void main string args. There. Are you happy? It's it's coding. No one has actually complained yet that there's no coding because there's only one video released. The second one should be coming out tonight. And <laughs> we wrote some code. There. That's it. It's good. Okay, move on now. I have a goal. I want to have a working application before the end of this year. Consider the kind of a deadline. I don't actually think that that's how long it'll take. Something catastrophic would have to happen for this to take that long and actually fail it. But it's good to have a deadline nonetheless, because if something catastrophic does happen, we can, we can use that as a kind of a way to imagine that we have a deadline, even if we don't. There's no actual deadline. Whenever this comes out, it comes out. But it'll, it'll simulate one very vaguely, and we'll, we'll probably easily have a working application. Now, I, I must emphasize that the working application doesn't mean finished. I would say that we will pass this goal if we have what we saw in the previous video. I can bring it up again here. This thing. If we have this thing... We're good. Why the hell does it only have 10 videos? I have no idea because this channel definitely has more than 10 videos. And it's not, it doesn't seem time based. Is it showing you videos of last month only? I don't know. I don't know. Besides the point. Point is, if we get to like this point, I will say goal is complete. But I very much expect to get beyond this point into the realm of progress. All right, now is the hard part. I want to go over the initial high level architecture, which is mostly my ideas of how this will look. I have uh, employed one of the most sophisticated tools in existence to achieve this goal. Now there will probably be a lot of cuts in this part, so brace yourselves. It might not make any sense by the end I'm done with it. So how do I imagine this application working? Uh, let's say here we have our core application. Uh, it's probably going to be bigger than this. But for starters, what this core application does, it sends requests to YouTube. YouTube. YouTube! Sends requests. Uh, what do we, what do we call this? HTTP? HTTP, baby. Add an S, just because we're secure. This application, let's call it Core App. App. This, this is going horribly wrong already, but bear with me. So the Core application sends some kind of requests to YouTube. YouTube gives us back some good old JSON data. If you don't know what JSON is, you can Google it. There's a page which describes it. But JSON is basically... Uh, something like a squiggly name, two dots, and then a string and value. 
See, I'm explaining something. And uh, it's more complicated than that. We'll get into it when we get into it, but basically that's what it tells us. We say, hey, give me some stuff, and they'll give us some stuff. This will be something like channels, channels, playlists, and vids. Data like that format. It will be mostly like links. I can just straight up write this out. Yeah, this has gone horribly wrong. It's perfect though. Now here somewhere we'll have settings. Which determines if we assume that this bit sends the requests, settings will tell it how the bloody hell to do this shit. And, uh, I don't know, it'll be like options menu or something. We'll figure this out. One thing I've forgotten to notice is that it will do so every now and then. We kind of need to make the clock look like an actual clock. Does that look like a clock? I think that looks exactly like a clock would. So it will do these requests over and over again and then, you know, get the response over and over again. With some frequency, which will probably also be determined by settings. Now, let's say this stuff arrives, we filter it. Or do some other stuff, maybe, because YouTube doesn't really have very good filter opportunities. It usually, if you tell it to give a playlist, it'll just give you the whole playlist. So, we're gonna have to do that in the application. Uh, filter, etc. You know, let's not go into deep too much. It's just whatever that's that looks too much like a g there we go that's better and pass all that shit on into this which will be some kind of a queue I don't know if it's going to be outside of the core application. Who knows? Uh, and I, I, I don't know. For some reason, I just felt it to be here. We can always... This is by no means the final design of the application. But anyway, we filter out what we don't care. Maybe we sort it. Maybe. We, we can actually put that sort. Question mark. So we don't know. We don't know. This, this could do all kinds of things. This will also be determined by settings, of course. And here we'll have... Well, this is terrible, actually. Can you go back a bit? Here we'll have someone who looks at the front of a queue. Yes, of course, that makes a lot more sense. And this will be the UI. Easy. Right, it'll be some kind of thing that then, I don't know, shows videos. That, that is a horrible representation of video, that's it. We're using actual, like, structures. God damn it. Right. And this is a video, 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 yeah. It listens to this bit and pushes all the things that it gets into this place based on some other settings. Um, now this will also then be settings. Probably. This is just looking at the previous application that had them at the top. Maybe we'll have ours at the side. Who knows? But obviously we will need to have another little bit of Controls. Controls would be more like uh, the menu. So maybe actually that's a better word to use here. So you have the menu. Which will determine the settings of the application, which control everything. And then, uh, what else do we need? Uh, we might need some kind of a database later at some point. Um, 
especially to save things. Let's let's do it as a cloud, not because it's actually going to be on the cloud. All right, and then there we go. Right, so this is this is beautiful. <laughs> But this is the this is how I imagine it at like some very high level that like this queue sitting somewhere else is really weird, but we'll figure it out. Uh, but that's the idea. You have this UI, you know, you have the menus would allow you to set up settings and other crap. Then you have actual settings for what you see here on the main page or whatever. There might be other buttons that give you other things. And uh this uh, this part of the application just keeps looking at the queue and just puts everything here. Maybe it uses the database to store like what what which videos you've watched, which videos you've clicked somehow, put somewhere. What are the options? So that's probably also yeah. What are these settings? Then you have the core application which does all the cool stuff like calling to YouTube, parsing the response and turning it into something we can actually use and housing the settings. Um, the settings will probably need to be in the database. There's a good chance. There's a good chance they will need to be in the database. And that's about it, really. I'm going to save this. There. Oh my god, I made a misspelling. Toll level architecture. More like lol, am I right? Oh, Jesus. I mean, that's pretty much it here, like at the top level. Uh, I can't imagine us using anything else outside of this. For now, there might be like more than YouTube, maybe. We'll decide, hey, well, let's fetch things from Twitch as well, because we can. But whatever, that's like a billion years from now. For now, we're just looking at the very basic YouTube replacement, and this is what I see it being like. Uh, that doesn't mean it'll be one queue, there could be multiple queues for some reason. We could do something here, maybe we'll do... Or maybe all the filtering and sorting will be here. Well, obviously sorting, some sorting will be at least here, but... Yeah. Now, the the thing is, of course, if this is how it ends up looking and working, then, you know, UI will just be kind of separate, as you can see. And then what we can do with this UI is we can just have another UI here. Just call it Android UI. Android UI. Alright, and then it would plug into all these things. Which would be nice. To be fair, I think that if anyone else tried to imagine it, it would see more or less the same thing. This probably doesn't tell you much about what the code will look like at all. Well, it does tell you a bit, I guess, but not enough. And that's fine. I think that's perfectly fine. I think this isn't meant to actually tell you that. This is just meant to explain the general very top level view of what's going to be going on here. And of course it wouldn't be complicated because it wouldn't make sense for it to be complicated. This just deals with very basic ideas like what, what the application does, what the UI does, and even then it's very vague. It's mostly just like, I guess I could just say, pull, pull actually, I believe it's, and then, Show. Yeah. Change. Now, yeah, adding these words would make it a lot more. We can do push here. And here we can have question marks, because we're not sure. I mean, obviously, we'll need to save something somewhere, but, you know. We don't know what is this key aspect, so there's no point in thinking about what it's going to be until we really know what it is. Yeah, I think this looks good as a starter. Please don't use this as a basis to hire me.
This is just something I did for a YouTube series. Please don't take it seriously, please. Come on. Oh, oh, of course. Mention the flaw I discovered. So, like I said before, I did actually do a, previously, a sort of application like this. Can we go look at it? Okay, fine. We can look at it. God. Could this be the YouTube sub box? The output directory doesn't correspond. Oh dear. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think this is it. Yes, yes. This is the YouTube sub box application. There's all kinds of crap here. Channel factory for name, channel name. Yeah, this, this, if I run this, wherever the hell it starts running. Oh, fuck it. Let's just press. As you can see, it's using a lot of requests to retrieve all of my subscriptions. And now the playlist items. So these must be videos of channels. As you can see, it's doing a lot. And I have like 140 subscriptions, which isn't that much. But uh, we're doing a lot more calls than 140, as you can see. It's just going crazy. And the reason for that is because it has to fetch the entire playlist. Now to explain that involves a little bit of reasoning, but I will go into it. All right, so this is like a very initial attempt at the sub box. It's just random stuff put together. This is probably not what it's going to be like. At all. Yes. Yeah, put some colors in here. They make no sense. Yes, I, I, I put every single channel as my own because that wasn't programmed in yet. But as you can see, it works. It, it shows videos, and I believe all of these videos are up to a week old. So this is all the videos over the last week that someone has released. And uh, I believe they are sorted, but same time I don't think so because this one's 15 hours and this one's five days so I think they're actually not sorted but uh, this is something that came from doing some stupid hacky shit so it's it's whatever yeah it has to return the entire playlist of some channels I've I've tested this and some channels like big playlist here has like 40,000 videos and you can get like a hundred at most, I think, at once, or fifty. So that takes forever. So if you subscribe to that guy, you'd have to wait until it fetches all that stuff. But eventually I switched to a kind of a parallel call, which I believe is faster. So let's see what happens if I run this one. It still has to do as the same amount of requests. But, as you can see, it would have launched at this point. That other one had to wait like 30 seconds. Whereas this one, only like 8 seconds. And it did exactly the same amount of calls. So, uh, it's way faster. <laughs> But um, that was the idea I figured out at some point. It's like, well, why don't I, instead of fetching, you know, everything all at once, why don't I do it parallel? So we're going to take it a whole, obviously, whole other level away. Not only it's going to be in parallel, it's going to be in a background thread, which will mean it will be even faster. So this flaw comes from a very simple factoid about videos. So I have two tabs of my videos open. So this is the tab of the most recent videos. And as you can see, this is a richer video I released recently. I believe it was 22 or 20, one of these days. And this is a video I released yesterday. 
as you can see, I'm releasing them out of order because obviously when I, let's say, finish editing a session of like three hours, I end up with a bunch of videos I can upload all at once. But I don't want to release all of them all at once because that's ridiculous. It would be spam that would suck. Now, I don't want to scroll down for s too many spoilers, but there are videos that I have uploaded below this one that won't come out until the next year, more than likely at the rate we're releasing videos right now. It's just because, you know, they're sequential and they go one after the other, one after the other. It wouldn't make sense to release them now. But when you take the playlist, the videos that you get returned are in the order of upload. So imagine, let's say half a year passes, I release the video that's below this one. In half a year, I will have produced like 150 videos at least, right? At the rate we're going right now, that's actually probably too many. Like a hundred would be closer. A hundred videos will be released. But I think 150 edited is reasonable. And maybe I'll have 150 videos uploaded. So in order to get to those videos that I will release on that day, if I take the playlist, I will actually have to download at least three or four pages. Of videos. If I don't do that, I'm not gonna see them. So even if, so, that was one of the big problems that you can't just take the first page, even though it has 50 videos, because the videos that you release today, they could be in the fifth page or even further back beyond, which is really crazy. Another thing that why this can naturally happen, you could just upload videos out of order, sometimes accidentally, like this video 17, which is uploaded between these two, because maybe something fucked up, maybe I had to re-render it, maybe it failed. There could be many reasons, and then I plop it in in the middle, and, you know, now it's all out of order. It's actually really annoying when this happens, and then you have to, like release them in the correct order and not fuck up. And there's no way to get the videos in the correct order from the API. The only way that this could work is if you use the search functionality, which I will display right now. So let's say we search for the good like 13. And let's order it by upload date. Which means I completely don't exist in this ordering. And if you run the API, it, it will return the videos by release date, actually, I believe. But it will be missing a huge chunk of them. And in the search, they don't even exist. That's how ridiculous this is. It's really, really weird. So, yeah. There's the flaw with the API that I discovered, and well, obviously other people have discovered it too, but what I meant is that I found it as I was doing the hacky solution, and that's why all of a sudden, instead of getting just one page, you have to get the whole playlist, and that can multiply the time it takes forever. So I got really demotivated to continue working until I realized, well, maybe we should try a parallel. Turns out it works in parallel. Who would have thunk? Anyway, I think by showing this off, we also introduced the environment. It's going to be IntelliJ IDEA. It's, it's Java. Now, this probably won't be the structure. This is the old structure with all kind of weird stuff. I will make the structure make a little bit more sense. For me, anyway. It'll probably make no sense for you, even if you know how to program. You're gonna be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just chill. I'm sure it'll make sense one day. So yeah, I think we've uh, accomplished our goal with for the video, and the next video, like I said, we will touch upon the process, the agile, of which... I'm not an expert. We'll pick a process and we'll see how it applies to this development. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later.